The national park owes its name to this bird, the biggest in Brazil, the Ema, a South American ostrich with the representation of thousands that live in the boundaries of this park. In other regions, such as the Mato Grosso, it is called Nyandu, and in Bahia de los Machos, Congo. Emma is the best known in all of Brazil, a bird that can weigh up to 35 kilograms and that has been brutally persecuted by hunters who make a profit on their feathers. Even today, hunters kill these birds and tear the feathers off, sending them via Paraguay to be later exported to Europe and Arabia, competing in price with African ostrich feathers. The Emas live in groups led by a dominating male, gathering up to six females in its harem. Theirs is a responsible debauchery, putting all the eggs in one single nest that will be incubated and taken care of only by the male. Thanks to the creation of this sanctuary, this marvelous example of the Brazilian bird fauna is recovering its population. The Emma National Park would lose its meaning without them, and even its name. Although the Emma is the queen of the bird population here in this protected nature, others will let themselves be admired by the visitors who come to this treeless Brazil. The tacha reminds us of the European goose because of their noisy group meetings. Ornithologists have studied the power of its honk and have quantified it. The voice of this strange bird the size of a turkey can be clearly heard three kilometers away. This baby chick needs its mother's larynx and its cries to orient itself and not get cut away from the group. Emas is an immense territory in which any mistake, however small, can be mortal. After leaving the Amish National Park, we return to central Amazonia. We can't help ourselves. We are in Mamirawa, the first functional development reserve in Brazil, where mankind is a fundamental part of a nature conservation project, unique in the world. The coastline population arrived here at the beginning of the century and even when they always took profit from the river, they did so in an unruly manner, being witness to the jungle's exhaustion and the end of their future. They became a civil society in 1992, and today, 6,000 people live decently in a natural area which they take care of and protect with all their senses. This reserve has benefited them since its creation. The family income is of three million pesetas a year since then, amounts that are well over the average of the Amazon inhabitants who do not regulate the extraction of natural resources, such as fishing, hunting, or the woodlands. Six communities of coastal natives live here, sending their children to school and assuring basic sanitary conditions, thanks to this project, which is based on the conservation and intelligent use of the river's wealth. United and organized, the Mamirewa population has set an example for the world. The civilized Amazonia, where there is a place for everyone.
This primate was unknowingly the craftsman of all this prosperity. The white ukari, an animal that also has its home in Mamirawa, as do the riverbed people, and how it enjoys itself. The biologist José Marco Aires arrived here in 1983 to study it and asserted the importance this river basin had for the survival of these primates, managing to get the first governmental declaration of protection, which in time gave way to this other project, which everyone benefits from. Such a special being can only be seen in Mamirawa. The white ukari has found its last refuge here, and the human inhabitants, those who once hunted it down, now protect it as if it were a child and are proud of it. This is the rarest and scarcest of all the primate specimens that inhabit the Amazon. Its habit of drinking its own urine also seems unusual to us. But according to the experts in primates, this behavior helps them obtain the antibodies and minerals that they need. The wonders of the woodlands. Fish is an important food source for the human beings that live in the Amazonia, as well as for those that live in the Mamirawa Reserve. Fishing is regulated by the fishermen themselves, defining reproduction areas that were once mindlessly drained out, and establishing a complete prohibition of those species that are scarce, such as the pirarucu, prohibited from the 1st of December to the 31st of May. This feeds the cormorants. Mamirawa is synonymous with a million hectares of flooded jungle where the water levels vary spectacularly depending on the time of year in which we visit. From the rainy season to the dry season, the water level will rise 14 meters, forcing the fauna to recede or advance according to the river's whim. But the big trees are always there, like this Samalmeida, the base, the column, and the spire of the tropical basilica. The giant arboreal of the Amazonia has grown silently in this woodland during a number of centuries and today give us their shade. The Asaku or the Esqueda can grow up to 50 meters high. They all disseminate their seeds thanks to the river movements. That is why the floods that now give way to the dry season, leaving this jungle upside down, are so important. Many vines are more than aerial roots. They are water udders for those that are familiar with them, and for those that are aware of the importance the liquid element has when one has to walk around this tricky green desert for a few hours. When they need water, the people that live around here make an incision here and another one here. So that it hangs down, you know. And the water is pleasant. It serves a lot of purposes, especially when the only water to be found is right here. This is the solution. Then they throw the bark away. The powder comes out of here, from this. 
Then it's used as a home remedy. It can be prepared at home. It dries and then you put it in the... Uh, like the salt. Um, well, you eat it. And it cures various kinds of cancer. 